Hey guys, what's up? Today I'll be combining every genre of game I love into one nightmare of a product. So you guys have been begging me to upload since I haven't uploaded a video in literally my entire lifetime. Yeah, so th this is literally my first proper video. Someone told me to make wow. videos in order to be cool, so here I am, trying to be cool. Oh my God. So if you find this video interesting or like my weird cringe ass projects, then please, I beg, I on the floor crying, hit the red button down below this video. God, I, n I never thought I would say that unsarcastically. Anyway, so, craft mine a small indie game developed in the dungeons of sweden minecraft is a game where you place a block and go wow but what it does have going for it, besides ego builds a house is the infinite exploration isn't it kind of rad when you randomly find sad thirst hole in the desert or when you find man pig dungeon in the nether. Or even the epic floating block. So the basics of my idea is that if you spawn in some randomly generated terrain, the further you go, the harder it gets. But in order to prevent you gamers from figuring out that you can camp in the same area for too long, A giant sphere of death grows from the center of the map, infecting, damaging, and increasing the difficulty tenfold when the player enters. This isn't just a running simulator. There will be various unique structures, chests, and artifacts to find throughout the map. You'll need to balance between how much time you spend in one zone and hope that you survive the next one. Now, I'm no Sebastian Lang, nor do I have the brain cells to code a bunch of voxel algorithms that Cube Games spent the greater of 10 years developing. So that's why I'm going with a device called Voxel Plugin, where I can do all that complicated voxel logic visually within the graph editor. This should be so much easier. Yeah, I was wrong. Uh, the latest version of the Voxel plugin has some issues and the general concept of Voxel terrain is pretty hard to grasp. Though I'll, I'll try to explain it to your little baby cheeks. So we start off with a black and white procedurally generated texture called Perla Noise, which is a magic computer algorithm that creates textures that look natural and cool. We don't have to worry about how it works internally, this node will do it all for us. Though the black pixels on this texture represent the lowest point and the white pixels represent the highest. But right now the terrain doesn't look all that interesting. We need some beaches, oceans and mountains. To do that, we need to section off heights of our terrain into separate masks that we individually edit. To achieve that, we use something called a height splitter, where we can input the ranges of each terrain type we'd like to mask and output them into these variables. We can even add some fall off to smoothen out the edges. Now that we have our masks, we need to mix them back into our original Perl and Noise using a lerp. A lerp will transition to A when the alpha is 0 and B when set to 1. Alpha can also be represented by our black and white mask, meaning that we can plug in our ocean mask and be able to individually edit regions of the terrain based on our masks. For now though, I'll just increase the height of the mountain region by multiplying the noise by a scalar of 1.5. Right now our terrain is 2D, which isn't very 3D, so we'll need to pass our noise through the make density from height node. This will use our 2D height and turn it into density. Think of it like a Minecraft filter. I'll also pass this into a generate surface node, which in short makes Minecraft go smooth. For the sake of time and the likelihood that you guys even care about this nerd type beat, I'm going to skip past the foliage system and coloring, though feel free to leave a comment if you're interested and I'll cover it in another video. So we have our beautifully generated terrain, and this could be ported as a touch grass simulator, 
Though we all know gamers won't play anything like that. <sighs> What? No! So as you might already know from the title of this video, I may be a small connoisseur of a little genre called roguelikes. So how could I not throw in some yes. permadeath? Meaning at yeah, any point, if you die, you're gonna have to start oh, from the shit. beginning. So just me. don't die. It's that easy. But it wouldn't be much of a roguelike without items. People love gambling their life savings into digital boxes from Daddy EA, so why not throw in some of that too? So I pulled together a small list of items including a pan which protects a small area behind you, a piece of ham that slightly increases your max health, a shroom to make you go zoom, a battery pack which gives you a rechargeable shield, a robotic arm to help your little dinosaur arms reach even further, a drone called New because he go new. And finally, the legendary L. Take it. Go on. Get it? It's worth it. Plus 10% damage, minus 10% wow. reputation. Now some would say I'm an artiste. While I would describe myself as a lazy piece of salami, and I need item frames for possibly tens of items. So rather than draw my own art, I'm going to get Metal Man to do it for me. This has been a bit of a hot topic recently on the wasteland known as Twitter, though I do not have the time to both make videos, develop a game, work full time, and also paint the Mona Lisa. My focus is prototyping and developing a play loop ASAP. If I get the time later on, I, I may replace these with my own. And after only an hour of messing around with different prompts, I've got some pretty good looking item frames. To top it off, we're going to spread these item chests around the player as they're walking around and despawn them when they get too far away. Then create a quick tab menu to show how many items you've collected. Now you can physically see how much of your life has been wasted blanking out and playing the game procrastinating instead of developing. Moving on, one of my favorite games right now is RoboQuest. It's a movement shooter roguelike which has some awesome weapons and enemies and it kind of reminds me of a game I still know and love called Ratchet and Clank, only mixed with Doom. So that's inspired me to implement my own weapon system into the mix. To achieve this, I've created two master classes, the weapon and the projectile. The weapon can spawn a specified projectile and pass some of its parameters down to it. The weapon class will then implement various functionality like homing, amount of bullets, spread, and fire rate. Doing so allows me to create limitless possibilities. For instance, I can create a rocket shotgun that homes in on its targets, or decide to swap that out with lasers. I also plan to add additional parameters like charge and burst. However, I'm on the fence as to whether I need to include clip size or reloading. For now, I've implemented three basic weapons. A shotgun, a beam gun, and la boom. At the start of the video and in the title, you've probably already heard the name of the game, which I've decided to call Necrosis. The name necrosis is actually a medical term for skin eating infection and the ever expanding zone is that infection. I've actually had this idea since back when I was in university as I've always wanted to create a game based around some sort of living infection. However, it got rejected by the group at the time for another game called Celeritus. No hard feelings. Either way, I made logos for both of them in Blender and I've decided to try and bring them to life now. So this video literally took my entire life to make. So if you've made it this far, it would be real epic of you to smash that like button and graciously caress the subscribe box below this video. I'd love to hear your feedback or any ideas you have on the concept so far. Next video, I'll be focusing on adding some sound effects, spawning structures and adding enemy types. Then maybe if I get time, the different zones and biomes too. I pulled together a large list of ideas that I'll slowly be pecking at. I also have some other projects which I've abandoned since leaving university, like Voxel Bash, 
which is a top-down spleef brawler based game that I'd love to revive at some point. Making these videos do take up a lot of time, but I feel like they're necessary alongside development. Anyway, thanks for watching, that's all. Get out of here, Gosh, dude. That's a foul. You know what? Street. What are you gonna do about? Oh crap, dude. Dude, let's go.